Hey Flower Tribe, it's Kelly Lehman from Cranberry Fields Flower Farm and Lucy Lehman. And today I wanna to show you some steps that I take to prevent my Annabelle hydrangea from flopping over. So if we haven't met yet, it's nice to meet you. My name is Kelly Lehman. I'm the owner of Cranberry Fields Flower Farm here in Cranberry, New Jersey. And I love giving you guys fun, free flower tips. So please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit that bell notification so you know whenever we post another fun, free flower tip video. So let's dive right in. So here it is, it's July, and we're in my New Jersey hardiness planting zone six secret garden and these are what my annabelle hydrangeas look like right now so i love this hydrangea these blooms come in they start off on like this little like tiny like green look and then they come over to this beautiful beautiful creamy white poofy look and then as the flowers start to mature even more they turn to like this beautiful green semi-dried flower on the stem they make for a beautiful flower arrangement so we're constantly out here cutting them and just collecting buckets and buckets full of this flower. But here's the thing, guys, these flower heads are so massive that a lot of times they flop to the ground under the weight of rain. So here are some steps that I take to make sure that that doesn't happen. The first thing that I do is I make sure that I don't prune these back in spring. So springtime comes along. I know a lot of people like to kind of prune back their smooth hydrangeas, their Annabelle hydrangeas to about two feet. And you could do that if you want, but if you do that, you're actually cutting back a lot of the framework that you could leave in place that will support these plants. So if you take a look deep inside uh, this plant that I have here, you'll notice all of these brown stems were from last year. So this is kind of like last year's wood. And by leaving them in place and not pruning them back, they're providing for like a skeletal structure for these brand new stems that are green. So these stems are super long, they're super tall, but they get floppy because of the weight of the giant flower head that's on the top. So if you leave these brown stems in place, you'll see that they're acting as almost like a little cage around some of these greener stems. So that's probably one of the most important things that I do, providing that cage work for them from last year's Green. And the way that you do that is you could just deadhead some of these flowers off um, towards like, you know, the end of winter, early spring, you can give them a deadheading, but I like to leave a lot of those brown stems in place. Another thing you can do is you can provide some structural uh, pieces inside your garden. So I love the look of wrought iron with flowers. So sometimes I'll just pop some of these around in different parts of my garden. And I'll even have like some of the flowers kind of poking their heads through because I think that looks really, really pretty. And so you can kind of do that and play with them as much as you like. It actually looks almost like a little work of art if you play with it, you know, enough. You can also take some gardener's tape and just tie them to the back of a fence. So a lot of times I will use Annabelle hydrangeas in places where I want to have like a border, like a hedge border. So right here you can see that I have uh, like a really um, uh, kind of a beat up fence in the back of it. It's blocking uh, the fence itself, but you can tell that that fence is providing a lot of support for some of those heavier blooms back there. They're actually like kind of leaned up against it. And you can tell that over here, they're kind of just, you know, leaning up against the fence instead of crashing to the ground. Another thing that I do, I'll put some of these wooden dowels that I get in like some of my local garden centers. I'll place two or three of them inside the plant. And what I'll do is I will either use some gardener's tape and I'll just kind of like wrap a little bit around the pole and then I'll wrap it around, I don't know, maybe like 10 or 15 branches. And then I'll secure it to the other pole that I have back here and that will provide for some really great support. Another thing that I'll do is if I just have a couple super, super heavy flower heads, I will just take some zip ties and I will zip tie some of the heavier branches together. So I've got like a dowel here and then I've got like two or three of the heavier branches is just kind of zip tied over here and that's gonna provide the support that it needs to keep those super heavy blooms up. So those are some things that I do. One more thing that I do that I wanna show you, like a little bonus tip, is right before it rains, if I know there's a big rainstorm coming in, I will come out to this plant and, oop, I got a little bee on this guy, I'm gonna be careful with him. I will actually support the stems on each other. So I know that this guy was flopping already, so chances are when it rains, he would come crashing to the ground. So the ones that I see that are already kind of drooping to the ground, I'm going to make sure that I support them with some of that old wood or some of those dowels that I put in place. And you can kind of just kind of like, you know, interlace them around each other. And instead of, you know, giving them no chance of surviving that heavy rain, I'll kind of lift these up and I'll just kind of wrap the stems very gently around some of these support systems. 
Thank you so much for joining me in this video and please say hi to us over on my Cranberry Fields Instagram page and also on my Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group because there's thousands of gardeners from all over the world and they're asking and answering loads of garden questions over there. And please also check out my brand new garden podcast and I have about 50 hydrangea care videos that I will link to the end of this video in my hydrangea care playlist. And please also let me know where you're viewing this from in this great, big, beautiful world. I love to see how our flower tribe is growing around the globe each week. And you can also check out my online flower courses. All of these will be in descriptions below and I will see you in the next video. So that's it. And guys, I have over 50. So that's it for this tip. And guys, I have over 50 videos showing you other hydro. So that's...